Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Glenmorangie. Uh, Glenmorangie itself is not exotic and rare, but the 15-year-old Cad Bull Estate is. Now, you in America, if you're in the States, received the 750 milliliter batch number one in 2019. Now in 2021, we over here in Europe get the 700 milliliter bottle. And it's also 15 years old. It is batch number two. Whiskey base number 185295. It's going over here for about 73, 75 euros. So I'm going to call Glenmorangie one of the most efficient distilleries that I know of. Why? We're going to start off with the packaging, first of all. Yeah, um, they basically all look the same. They just take different colors. Bottle, all the same, just put different labels on them. Very, very good. Even the um, the peel-off here was perfectly um, manufactured. You don't need a knife. You don't need a fingernail to pull it off. It's just there. And it just, here, look at this. It just very pleasantly opens up, swirls off, and you have this wonderful, wonderful bottle. All the information is here on the box. You have their nice little logo here, symbol, you have the Glen Morangi there, you have a little bit of text in the back, and they don't repeat themselves, at least that not that much, and that's great. You have the age 15, you have the batch 2, you have the American Oak bourbon casks. You have a very, very brief um, description of this. It says a deep and creamy whiskey. Mm, I'm not sure if I agree with it, but that's okay. Now, it says one thing, oh, limited edition. Oh, FOMO must have limited edition. If there's one thing I would really like to change on this is um, crafted by the 10 man of Tain. You're producing 6 million liters or 5 some plus million liters of alcohol a year. You need more than 10 guys. And hopefully there's a woman or two involved as well there. All right. So um, very good. Now there is a Glenmorangi um, Cad Bowl with the prefix behind it or whatever uh, title, The Legend. It's a one liter bottle. It's travel retail. It has a finish. No, we have um, the Cad Bowl Estate. What is the Cad Bowl Estate? The Cad Bowl Estate is around the distillery. That's actually a state a house, and they have working. They have a working farm there, and so they actually use the grain uh, from that harvest from their own farm. So it's a really a grain to class whiskey. Yay! Now, my problem is I'm a whiskey geek, I'm a whiskey nerd, I'm a whiskey connoisseur, and I would like to know what type of grain. Now, if you're, pr if you're praising your own barley harvest, tell me what was, what was it? Is it a Consato? Is it Olympus? Is it something else? What type of barley was it? Thank you. That'd be great. All right, Dr. Bill, so if you're going to do something, you make my heart beat faster and put a little bit of uh, more information on here. So some people on the online site say it's first fill bourbon. Um, basically, they only talk about the entire time here is using a, um, using um, hand-selected American oak bourbon casks to create the second batch release of our single estate whiskey. Yay! All right. Oh, I thought I had pulled, pulled, poured it on me. I'm sorry. Talking, talking, letting, have time to um, aerate. Whoops. So as if you've been to my channel before, you will know that I'm probably going to compare it to something. And what am I going to compare it to? Well, the 10-year-old standard. This is 75 euros. This is less than 30 euros. I can get about two and a half of these for one of these. Now, this does have an age statement on it. It is a 10-year-old. And the original, and this is a 15-year-old. So now, um, yes, the bottle's almost empty. I'm sorry, it's going to be one of those moments where we have to actually sing here. It's raining, man. Hallelujah, it's raining, man, because it's empty. And if I'm part of the whiskey tribe, of course, you have to do this. And then you could be singing, but it's not going to stand like that for very long on my table here. So, all right, so very good, 40%. 43%. Both of these have no information whatsoever about natural color. Both of these have no information about non-chilled filtered. So we have to assume um, caramel coloring was added and it was chill filtered. Boo. All right. On the nose. I like the nose. This has a very, very simplistic nose, a very efficient nose. 
as I said, Glenmorangie is a very efficient distillery. They have six pairs of stills, so 12. Um, they were originally gin stills, is what I was told. Therefore, that's why the highest giraffe stills in the industry in Scotland. They just built another two stills in a separate building, have new washbacks there. They have at the moment over 10 washbacks, um, stainless steel, very efficient. Uh, their uh, mash ton, 10.2 liters, 10.2 tons, sorry. Um, everything set up 52 hours of fermentation time, get the stuff in, get the stuff out. So they basically produce one single type of whiskey unless they're doing something special and they will actually have with those two stills in the um, back room um, or in the new building, Dr. Bill Lumsden will actually have the possibility to create over a million liters of alcohol a year. I'm sure it'll be about a half of a million, but still, wow. They do have the capacity at the moment of 5.5 million. They're doing 5.2 million. So they're basically almost running 24-7, 365 days a year. So this is very, very, very efficient getting that alcohol out there. They used to be number six in the world in 2014. And now, um, 2020, they made their way up to the fourth best-selling single malt in the world, which is from Scotland. Single malt scotch. Um, which is fantastic, right? Um, good job, guys. On the nose, absolutely nice. I get a nice little mint. I get barley sugar. I get vanilla. I get almonds. Yeah. So here it says, I could have full and fruity with layers of orange with creamy vanilla candy and honeyed apricots with jasmine and heather oh i didn't get any jasmine didn't get any heather didn't get any honeyed apricots so sorry my nose is not fine enough for this i just get barley i get i get um vanilla from the ex-bourbon casks and I can't really tell you if this barley is better or worse than the others. Over here, the 10-year-old. All right, so this this smells much more refined, much more of a, um, yeah, the word refined, I'm going to, very, very focused, very, very um, pinpointed. This has a little bit of that, that that milk acid, that butter acid moment in it, a um, little bit of that lactose um, acid here, baby puke, Shh, didn't want to say it, um, just a tiny whiff. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Cheers. Hmm. I would have never, ever guessed that this is 15 years old. You could have given this to me blind, and then you could have said, hey, it's a four- to five-year-old whiskey. It's like, okay, yeah, believe it. I almost get like a metallic type of youthfulness here. At the end, there's something weird going on. It's almost like a bitter almond moment. Yes, there is the barley sugar. Yes, there is the vanilla. Yes, there is a little bit of tannins there. Yes, I do get the orange peel a little bit, but it's very subdued. Nothing shouting. The volume of this is almost like it's muted. It's sh library type of moment. And the thing is, there are no transitions. It does this, and it does this the whole time. It's it's simple, it's flat, it's not complex. Now, what really surprised me was the 10-year-old. Now, I am I like the 10-year-old. Um, if someone's trying to get into whiskey, this is something that I often try to give them and show them. So we have the different pillars here that are very, very important. The tallest stills in Scotland, casks only used twice. Uh, the 10 men attain as a... Um, a whiskey of uh, renown. Um, but this whiskey actually has more character, more complexity, more transitions, more flavor than this does. Now, why? Is it the casks? I don't know. Is it the barley used? Maybe. Is it the distillation process? Probably not.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's really nice is towards the end, I get a nice little, like a little bit of an afterburner. Wonderful. Is this a fantastic whiskey? No. Is this a good average whiskey? Yes. Is it on par for me with Glenfiddich 12? Yes. Um, Glenmorangie 10, very nice, very good entry level. Nothing to complain about, nothing to write home about. Absolutely a benchmark of consistency. This, on the other hand, the um, Cad Bowl Estate is disappointing. It just doesn't give me any complexity, any transitions, any type of depth. And that's what I really dislike is here. It says a deep and creamy whiskey. A little bit of creaminess. All right. Depth, no. It's a flat and maybe slightly creamy whiskey. Distilled from single estate barley for a spirit of sweet creaminess, then aged in American oak bourbon casks for depth. All right, guess we have different opinions here on what depth should be like. Love the nose. Wonderful nose. B minus nose. C minus taste. Mm. Just not doing it for me. All right, it says here, deep, rich, and silky tastes unite poached pears. Never had those. Interesting. Lemon, cinnamon, and ginger with intense toasted oak tempered by eucalyptus at the finish. Oh, is that the weird thing I was doing? All right, so if you dilute this down a little bit, which I didn't, 25%, 20%, it almost kills it. Towards the end, you get a little bit of flavor. And what is that flavor? Eucalyptus. Mm. So they're not wrong with a lot of their tasting notes here. But yet, they're really digging deep and really finding things. It's very muffled. It's very, very tempered. It's very, very um, quiet whiskey. Um, do I like a quiet whiskey every once in a while? Yes. Do I like a bourbon matured whiskey every once in a while? Yes. Do I want to pay 75 euros for this fairly quiet, simple, flat whiskey? No. So I'm going to give this a D for value for money. Do not buy this whiskey unless you want to have your um, expectations um, disappointed. <laughs> Uh, go and buy two bottles of Glenmorangie. They're going to taste better than one bottle of this, in my personal opinion. All right, so Glenmorangie is one of those distilleries where it's like, it's, it's, I never know what I'm going to get. It's like the little, it's like Christmas. Is it going to be wonderful? I think it was the Mazala cask that they did there, um, 2020. Beautiful, beautiful bottling. I loved it. A tail of cake. Didn't like it at all. Uh, Cad Bowl um, Estate didn't like it. So something else I might have from Glen Morangi, I might love it. And so it really depends on what they do and how they do it and how it interacts with my palate. It's my own personal opinion here. Someone else might really, really like And I found a guy, what well, was Drink Hacks, um, 8.5 from 10. So he liked it. I really cannot give it that high of a score. Sorry. All right. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. At the moment, this bottle is only basically available over here in Germany. Maybe it might reach, reach the rest of Europe sometime soon. Question of the day was and is, what is your favorite Glen Morangi product? Hmm. All right. So Signet, for example. I hated Signet. It was coffee in a glass, mocha in a glass. If I want mocha, I'm going to drink mocha. I'm not going to drink whiskey. But other people love it. And that's one of the things that really they're experimenting, they're doing. I commend you for that, but this time you just didn't hit my taste profile, my wheelhouse. All the best. See you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Thank you very much for liking, sharing, subscribing, and maybe even telling others. All the best. Bye-bye.